and then do the front angle. No, it wasn't recording. Okay, can we start over? <laughs> okay. Wait, when you do. And then the side. Okay. Okay, so Dennis, tell me about some of your barn finds with these little cars. Well, this particular car, I went to a rummage sale and they had multiple things out there for sale. And I asked the lady if she had any toys and Hot Wheels. She said no. Where do you see what he has behind the second garage door? This is one of the best in the world. And I walked over there and there was an old sled for $15. I would say so. Best that I've seen. Well, for whatever reason, the old vault opened up. Bob Perkins was getting us into a secret toy car collection. You'd never know what's behind this door just by looking at Like maybe about. some toy car barn finds? What's in here, Dennis? I was about 40 years of collecting toys. Okay. But next to the sled, there was a free box. And in that free box was this Mustang. It's a uh, white enamel, four HP Mustang. It's, it's really a tough car in a Hot Wheel collection to get. You just don't see many of them. What's the vintage on it? It's uh, probably 74, 75. And what's it worth? This car in this condition is probably worth seven or $800. That's what I would put it at. But now like most, most, people... most of my cars aren't for sale, so I'll never realize a profit. I just keep them. But now most people would criticize you for not telling the lady that this car was worth some money. But how do you answer them? Well, the way I see it, I spend literally days going to rummage sales, you know, 50, 100 rummage sales and find nothing. So I do put my time in and once in a while I do get rewarded. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, but are, are Hot Wheels valuable now? I thought they kind of bit the dust. Oh no, they're still valuable Hot Wheels. So. And sure enough, Dennis Degner told us about some incredible toy car barn finds. Them are all the Hot Wheels from uh, 1968 to 1974. Amongst the 40,000 or so toy cars. Well, I probably have 40,000 Hot Wheels. 40,000? Well, what's, you got a cover here. What's under this cover? Some kind of car here? That's a Mustang SVT Cobra. What well, year? 98. Okay, what, brand new or something? Yeah, it's got 7,000 miles on it. And I did uh, quite a few modifications to it. So it's a little faster than your normal Cobra. What else? Well, I like the small Tonka. I got a lot of small Tonka toys. Okay, let me show you another find I found at a rummage sale. <clears throat> this was uh, this is a set of four Tonka vehicles. They were in a basement and they were actually in an old milk crate. It's these four right here. I bought all four for $50. And they're, they're worth quite a bit more than $50. I thought that was really good find, especially when all the other people there were looking through the garage, and I was the first one to go down the basement. Well, and I found that for 50 bucks. And actually, they came as a set. They're from the 60s, early 60s, and uh, I bought them all for 50 bucks. And they're quite valuable, at least to me they are. Worth a lot more than 50 bucks, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, so. Probably 10 times that. Okay, the next interesting thing I have is I went to Oconomowoc, it's about 15 miles from here, and I went to buy Hot Wheels, and I, I bought like uh, 24 Red Lines, and at the end of the deal again, this guy had this cement mixer, which I've never seen before, and I've tried looking up to see what it is, who made it, and I really can't find any information about it. I assume it's from the 50s. Everything's there. It looks brand new to me. Mm -hmm. I've been offered $500 for it, but I just don't want to sell it not knowing what it is. 
and no one ever came here and told me they seen one before. So that's my mystery piece. <laughs> the next thing just happened about a month and a half ago. I got a phone call that the uh, gentleman had died. He was 87. They sold the house. The house had to be cleared out in four days. So they had like a thousand toys they wanted to sell. And a, a guy came over and offered him a dollar a toy and he said no. So somehow he got my number. I caught him up. I went over. I said, well, what would you take for these toys? And he told me he'd take $2,000. So I didn't even go through them all. I just said I'd take them. And then when I got home, I found all these slot cars. And there was like roughly 50 slot cars. And the value, most of them are anywhere from, let's say, 35 to to $100 or more for each one. I also collect slot cars, so it was a good deal for both of us. Now, who makes these slot cars? What's the make? AFX. They're from the 70s, and the Tycos are probably from the 80s. If you got a thousand, this just, you got a lot more than this, then, right? Yeah. So, where's the rest of them? It's spread out through the garage, and there's some still in my truck. I just don't have room for everything. Now, why are these so valuable if they're from the 70s and they, what's so special about them? Well, it's like anything else, no one saved them. And you can find them loose, but to find them new, unused in a box, that's the tough part. Most of the time they're, they're loose and they're not worth half of what a box one is. Oh, the original box makes them. Now what about that Tyco Curve Hugger there, HP2, what's that? Oh, you got lots of those, huh? Yeah. He had uh, probably 25 of these. He must have been a collector then. Yeah, he did. He must have just bought them and put them on the shelf and uh, just never used them. Never used them. Okay. I do have a slot car set up in the house that me and my granddaughter race. <laughs> so, Bob, what do you think of all this? Well, he got me hooked on it for a while. For about 10 years, I, I collected the red lines if they were new in the blister pack. Uh -huh. And Dennis can probably tell you more about a couple of the trades we made. We made some pretty good trades. Tell me about the trade, Dennis, on the Indy Pace car that had 11 miles on it. I had a, a new Indy Pace car. Actually, had eight miles on it, and a 429 Cobra Jet Cougar convertible, 71. You're talking full size, big full size cars. Yeah. yeah. And I traded those two cars to Bob for a bunch of toys, mostly Hot Wheels. So you kind of got out of big cars into little cars and you can store them easier and all that, right? That's what I thought at the time, but now I got less room for small cars than I did for big cars. <laughs> I used to have five muscle cars in this garage years ago. Fit five in here, yeah. and now it's full of uh, toy cars. All full of toys. Yeah. There's some more promos. I also like Harley Davidson, the old tin toys from Harley. Mm -hmm. And these, these old hats right here are very hard to get, especially with all the different pins. Yeah, cool stuff. Huh? And you don't look at value because you like the stuff, but Bob, before we turned on this recorder, you were saying how much this was worth, what? Well, them, them new blister pack Mustangs over there in this, the one special case, those are probably anywhere from 500 to several thousand dollars each in unopened blister pack. Let's look at those, Dennis. I mean, I don't want to get you just off on value, but we kind of, we're not collectors, so we want to know what this stuff's, this stuff's worth. These are 500 to thousand dollars a piece, these cars. Yeah. yeah. These I used are... to buy whole Mustangs for that. What are they that they're worth that much money? Well, the original blister packs, which these are from 68 to 71, and the color makes a big difference. Uh -huh. You can take a, a, a green blister pack Mustang that could be worth five or $600, then you go to a brown one or copper like over here, uh -huh. that's worth probably 1300 or 1400
So what's the most valuable piece in here? Everybody wants to know that. Like if you had to pick out a car or <laughs> everything. It's tough to say at any given time. Uh, open hood scoop Mustang is a very valuable Mustang. And that was when they first issued, some of the Mustangs actually had holes in the hood. That's why they called them open hood scoop Mustangs. Can you show us one? And when was this thing, when was this open scoop Mustang issued and what year is it and stuff? So the package actually says 67, but they came out in 68. Now why is that so valuable? What, what is it worth? Can you tell us? Well, it depends upon who's buying it like anything else. To me, I'd pay a couple thousand dollars for, for that car. Normal hood is closed. Uh-huh. What did it cost new when it was new? They were less than a dollar. Like 97 cents. So 97 cents in what year? 68. And you went where to buy them? Wait, anybody. SS Kresge's Woolworth. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna tell you is something I should have bought but didn't. But I'll tell you the story on that. Okay. It was a rear board beach bomb. A what? A rear board beach bomb, a Volkswagen. Uh-huh. And uh, I could have bought her for $15,000. And I didn't buy it. I was in line in California at the convention. The guy had it in line there for 15000 And he sold it for fifteen. Another guy there bought it for twenty-nine. He put a full-page ad in a toy magazine, sold for 79000 and I could have bought her for fifteen. All in a short space of time? It was all within a few months, yeah. Hello. You have one? I have a green one. It's a reproduction one. But this is basically what it was, but it was in pink. And at the time it was sold, it was the only known one to exist. These are never made to sell to the public. They changed the design before they actually packaged them is that what makes it so valuable yes just a few of them out there yeah you have to be an extreme collector to pay seventy nine thousand for that little so it looks like this but this is a reproduction right it looks exactly like this but it's pink you know 97 cents to 97 2, cents somewhere 79 cents from where you bought them okay, so what are you hunting this here. The 36 Ford. The story on this car is I bought a bucket, a five gallon bucket, and it had some cords in it. And I just needed some extension cords. In the bottom of this bucket was this car in a package. Five dollars. <laughs> That's probably the most unusual thing I ever bought in a bucket that had a hot wheel in it and new, unused. Dennis, do just these cars just follow you around? I mean, who else could find that? Can we look at it a little closer? Oh, yeah. Now, tell me, how, when was this issued and what it, who did it? What manufacturer? It was Mattel Hot Wheels. It's a 1968 or 69. I'd have to look. But it's, it's a... New in the package? New in the package. It must have been some special promo because... It didn't come in a you know a normal package like this. Dennis, tell us something that's inexpensive now that you really like that people could buy. Well, personally, I think these Danbury Mint cars right now are good buys. Some were Danbury Mint mostly and Franklin Mint. When they were new, they were $115 new or more. And you can buy almost any of these for 50 bucks or less. And they come with a box and a title. So I, for fifty dollars, I buy every one I can find. Really, and they're detailed. They're very nice cars. What kind of uh, model gears are they in make, sir? Well, there's a big variety here. Anything from the early 1900s up to the 70s. They basically made all types, all makes, all models. Franklin or Danbury Mint 
I believe they are closed now. They don't produce them anymore. But the first thing is collect something you like and don't worry about the money. That's what I do. But, you know, Dennis was with the toy stuff like that was with the cars when he first started. He just liked the stuff. He had no no sense of what value might be down the road and I didn't either with the full-size car. It's just something you like and you become a collector and all of a sudden you end up with something like this. Ha, 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 ha.